Hello and welcome to this video. Today we are going to look at how to convert an existing Fusion 1 project to Fusion 2. Here we have the Asteroid sample which is a game based on the Asteroids game and we are going to convert this to Fusion 2 and just show you overall what needs to be done in your project for upgrading, where do you need to be careful, how to fix the errors, how to upgrade the API and anything else. The game itself is just super simple, we can dive in real quick. So this is fully multiplayer, we're just gonna start the host now. And the way it works is you have your spaceship here, you can fly around, you can shoot. And then after a while asteroids spawn in, get points from killing them. And they split into smaller ones. And if you hit an asteroid with your spaceship, you lose lives or die. And that's really the entire game. So we're gonna upgrade this. And the first thing for upgrading is you need to make sure that you're on Unity 2021. So if your Unity project is on an older version, the first step is to upgrade. So just open it within your Unity version, fix all the bugs, upgrade all the Unity packages that you need. If you encounter issues with Fusion itself, you can ignore those. Just make sure that everything else is ready. Once you have upgraded your Unity project, um, the next step is to upgrade Fusion. And before we do that, we want to save our network project config. Because this contains information about your project config that you want to keep. And we're gonna delete the entire Photon folder and replace it with Fusion 2. So what we will do is just move this outside. And then we delete the Photon folder. And the best way to do this is not inside Unity actually open this in explorer and just delete photon and if you get an issue like that where it says that unity is blocking this usually you only get this if you enter play mode because then in this case nano socket gets loaded just close unity then you should be able to delete this voila now open unity again you will get errors because yeah we just deleted fusion right so there's gonna be a ton of api errors just ignore them you don't need to enter save mode and now we have an empty photon folder that's perfect so the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the website and you're gonna download the latest version of Fusion 2. So in this case it's Nightly 736. Just click the download button. Wait for that to download. Then simply open the Unity package. Import everything. Don't need to keep anything out. And once done, we want to move back the network project config. So this goes into resources, just drop it back in. And now you're still gonna have a bunch of compile errors, that's fine. Uh, one thing you will notice is that network project config is still not readable and there is no fusion here. The, so like no fusion menu item. The fix for that is to just close unity again and open it again via the unity hub and by doing so it will just load those types and now you have network project config working again there's a few changes in here nothing too relevant and you have the fusion menu with the fusion wizard back and now the next step actually is just to get this app id filled in so Fusion 1 and Fusion 2, they do not use the same app IDs because they use a different plugin on the server side. So while you had the Fusion 1 app ID here, that will no longer be compatible with Fusion 2. So what you need to do is you need to go into your dashboard, create a new app, and then here select Fusion, and then select version 2. Give it a name. 
create yet. Then copy this app ID back in here. And with that you have a valid Fusion 2 web app ID. Now all that's left is digging into the code and fixing all the API errors that we have here. Hold on for a sec, there is one more thing we need to do. Open your Unity project folder in the file explorer and we need to go to packages. Then we open the manifest and here we need to upgrade addressables. So if you already have addressables in your project you will need to upgrade it and if you don't have it just go in here and you add a new line make sure this is formatted correctly and you add com.unity.addressables and the version is 1.21.12 or you can use a newer version as well then you save that returning to unity this will recompile import the new addressable versions and this is just needed by Fusion. Once this is done, we can start looking into the code. Just open any file in your preferred IDE. In my case, it's Rider. And let's look into the issues. So the first error we got here is that iNetwork runner callbacks actually has two new callbacks. So you will need to implement those. Rider is can just be done automatically. So the two callbacks are on object exit and the on object enter AOI callback. The um, copy this, make sure that you have the exact same parameters else this won't work. And what these callbacks do is that in Fusion AOI, whenever an object enters or exits that area, in Fusion 1, nothing would happen. So you wouldn't know when an object left that area. It would just stop moving, just stop updating and getting new network properties and RPCs. In Fusion 2, you get reliable callbacks. So you can either hide those objects or run custom code. So when you do this, make sure that you also remove the throw because else whenever an object enters or exits, you will throw an exception, which is not what we want. Just keep these empty for now. This already fixes the issue in most scripts that will use iNetwork Runner callback. So we can return here, look at something else. Here again we have iNetwork Runner callbacks, relatively easy to fix. Return to Unity and go to the next thing. We have the player data which has a lot of networked variables. So here unchanged does no longer exist. So this has been removed and replaced with a new change API. So first let's remove all the unchanged and then let's look how we can implement the new API to call these unchanged functions we had before. So the new way to detect changes is by using a change detector. This is a new type which you create per network behavior. So we have this change detector which is responsible for detecting changes on player data networked. And then you need to initialize this with a change detector. And spawn. And you pass in the, the source. So here you have three options. You almost always want simulation state, which is the current state, but you can also decide to use the before or the after state. So these are the from and to snapshots Fusion interpolates during render. However, just use simulation state. Make sure that you assign your local variable to this change detector. Now to detect changes in Fusion 1, on change would always be checked in render and called in render. So to get the same behavior in Fusion 2, we can check this as well in render. However, note that the Fusion 2 API gives you much more flexibility as you can now run your change detection in any function. So you can also do it in fixed update network or anywhere else. To detect changes, you just iterate over the change detector. So it's a, for each var changed in change detector. 
get changes from this. Here you get two buffers out. These buffers um, allow you to get the state of the network variable, so the previous and the current states. They won't be necessary here, I think. So we're just gonna call these functions. But first of all, these should no longer be static. There's no need for that anymore, just how the old API used to use. So player input of behavior, really just the local instance we have here. So you can replace that everywhere. And with that, we don't even need to pass any info into this, right? Now, to call this, here we're iterating over changes. And the change here is simply a string. This string will be the name of the network property that changed. So depending on the name, we want to call the right function here. A quick and easy way to do that is to use a switch, the name, and say case name of nickname. The nice thing about this pattern is that name of will automatically refactor, right? So if we rename this to nickname2, it will not break your project because else like hard coding strings can be very bad if you end up refactoring and you get issues if this should just use name of to be safe. Then here we say nickname changed. Now just repeat this for the other two variables. Name of life and name of score. Then we say life's changed and we say on score changed with that we have successfully upgraded the on change callback Let's see what else we've got here spaceship controller here again we have an on change and here we actually want the previous and the next state but this is a bit more of an interesting upgrade so let's start again by Removing the on change here and implementing a change detector. A private change detector. Change detector. Initialize this in spawn. Simulation state source again. And here we loan like this on change does no longer exist. So let's remove this. Actually, we can remove all of this really and just and we can just call this toggle visuals directly because all this function really does is get the before and after value, then call this and we can get this at another place again in render text for changes using the for each used before oh. mm -hmm. for each change detect detect changes for each for change I'm gonna call base for each We will again use the same switch we used before. Now here we want the was alive and is alive, so the previous state and the current state. For that we need a property reader. So I say var reader. Property reader. This will take the same type first 
the build network property has. So in this case, a network pool. And then it wants the name of the property. This name of it alive. So this will give us the reader to read this property here. And now the buffers are actually needed to extract that value. So if you want the values, which are was alive and is alive, we say reader read and we pass in the two buffers. So first the previous and then the next. This is properly call, called the current one. It's the current state. Then we just pass these further into the toggle visuals function. We have one more issue here. This is just missing namespace. We now just need fusion.lag compensation. We use lag compensation. That's it. Turning to Unity, the remaining error is the, in the object pool. Here, the API changed quite a bit. So for now, we will just comment this out. And I'd recommend to just upgrade by starting with the new API and writing a new pool. It's much more simple now and you can get started by using an existing pool from a sample. The pool is not really necessary, it just improves performance. With that removed, we got a few more errors. Let's start one by one. Here, this is a play ref and the function get color takes an int. And this used to be cast implicitly to int. Now you need to manually call dot player ID to get the int. What's important here is that the way we do player IDs, we no longer recycle them. So in Fusion 1, when a player left, they would have ID 5. Then when a new player joins, they would take the free ID 5. They would always have a small ID number. This is no longer the case now, we just increment each time a new player joins and discard all the IDs. So if you have something like this and you don't have this modulo here, you need to be careful because now you can get much larger numbers in here. So that's why you need to always make sure you have something like this. If you decide to use player numbers in a way like this, where you just say 1 to 8, because you can't guarantee that all your if you have like eight players, you can't guarantee that they have IDs from zero to seven. Next. Yeah. This network transform no longer has an interpolation target, but this one will also have a network rigid body. Comment this out, we will get back to this. Actually, we can, we can fix this now. So this will Use the network rigid body now. Network rigid body 3D. Body. And we'll need to just fix the prefab as well after this. Because it still has the old type on it. The old network rigid body used to inherit from network transform. So that's how this works. The new type does that no longer in Fusion 2. So we need to replace that. What else do we have? Here, the pool we said, not using that for now. And then the active scene, this has been replaced with load scene. And what's different in Fusion 2 is, here this is called on both the server and the client, like this dark game is called for both host and client. However, load scene should really only be called on the host or server in Fusion 2. So I'm gonna check, we are a server. And only then call this. In Fusion 1, this would just be a no op on the client, but in Fusion 2, this will throw an exception. So make sure to only load the scene on the server. Next, we have teleport to position. First, this uses the old network rigid body, which we want to replace with the new one. And then the function is now just called teleport, besides that, everything else is the same. Here, we do a modulo of a player ref and an int. So this uses, like this used to use again the implicit conversion. 
which now we need to explicitly say the player ID to get named. Here we have the same issue. One more again. Now that's looking better. So we have no more errors in the console. That's a good start. So we have a few prefabs that we also need to upgrade. And what's very important here is that you need to fix all your console errors before you start changing prefabs. Because the only way you can save a prefab is when you have no errors on the scripts on the prefabs. So first make sure that your errors are fixed and then fix your prefab layouts. So here we have small asteroid, which used to have the old, now deprecated network rigid body. So we're removing that and we're replacing it with network rigid body 3D. This still uses an interpolation target, so just drag that in. The network transform no longer needs this, but the network rigid body still does because of the way the physics engine works, so make sure to hook this up and have a separate visual object. Then we have big asteroid where we do the exact same. There we go. That's all the asteroids. Oh, we have also the player object, which is the spaceship. Here remove network rigid body. 3D population target. One more thing is the network runner. So here first this used to be the pool which you no longer use. Then what we need here is a network simulation. In Fusion 1 this would be automatically added if you forgot it. That's why, that's why the deprecated one which is network physics simulation 3D is not on here. So we're gonna use the new one now and we need to manually add it if you actually want to have physics running. So we're gonna add runner simulate physics 3D. With that we have a runner that runs network physics. Now so far everything is looking good. Just enter play mode and that usually reveals a bunch more issues that you need to fix. So I tend to start by just playing in single player making sure that works perfectly. And then you also want to test in multiplayer, of course, because that always reveals new issues. So we do have something here, which is in the spaceship spawner. So this here is a simulation behavior, which they're no longer supported on network objects. So just upgrade them to network behaviors. It's just the way we change this, so the way simulation behaviors work now, you can still use them on the runner, but you don't use them on anything networked. And now we also don't need this ice bond, but we need to make sure to override here the function from the network behavior. Now let's just try again. See if we're still getting any exceptions. Yep, in the spawner again. Nullra. Line 28. However, this is a network behavior now. Let's check the scene. So this is in the game scene. Going on here. So we have a spawner here, right? So this is on a network object. And a runner here shouldn't be null. Maybe it just didn't save something properly in the scene. Let's try again if it being a network behavior now. Ah, there we go. So we have our player now. We can move around can shoot, we can destroy the asteroid which spawns new ones, and then if we hit one we should immediately lose, because in single player mode just have one life, there we go. 
So, so far everything seems to be working fine now. One more thing is to test in multiplayer. Just create a build and make sure that it also works. So we have one host now here and the client here. As you can see, they connected to each other and they work out of the box. The client can move, the host can move if I select the other window. Now if a player dies, they respawn and they lose a life. And if they kill an asteroid, they get their score updated. Player 7354 now just has one life, so if they die again, the game should end. Player 2 should win the blue one. Try to get hit here. Yeah, so we say the player 95991 return to menu, and this one should also return. The implementation right now is just a disconnect, so it takes off a second. And with that your project is upgraded to Fusion 2.